everyone here, thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Sundar Truax, and I'm one of the folks who uh, assisted in the organizing of this event. And on behalf of everyone, I just want to say thank you so much for coming, thank you for showing up, for participating, uh, and for playing a role in our democracy. It really matters, and uh, we're thrilled to, to have you here this evening. So thank you. As you probably know, we had invited Representative Mike Gallagher to be here with us. And uh, it's unfortunate that he's obviously not here. Um, due to a prior commitment, he's out of the country and was unable to join us. And despite our repeated attempts to coordinate with his office to try and find a date that would be amenable and would work for him and work for us, uh, his office refused to respond. So here we are. You know, there's a quote. <laughs> Uh, there's a quote that I think we're all probably pretty familiar with, which is that democracy is not a spectator sport. And it's, I think, events like this and gatherings like these that really make that abundantly clear. Uh, this is clearly not a spectator sport. And thank you so much for playing an active and sustained role in our, in our government. It, it really matters, and it's, it's very cool to see. So thank you for being here. We also know that democracy is pretty messy. And you know, look no further than either of our two political parties or some of the comments that are lobbed back and forth or you know, from elected officials and from, from individuals, maybe some people in this room, maybe lots of folks who aren't in this room, um, that democracy is really messy. And, and it can be challenging to discuss, to listen, and to compromise. Um, that can be really hard to do in the first place, and it can be particularly hard if we're talking about issues that we're passionate about. And many people in this room, and me included, are rightfully passionate about a number of issues because something like healthcare doesn't affect a particular party, and the environment does not affect a particular political party or ideology. It affects all of us, and it affects all of us really strongly, and we feel really passionately about it. And it can be difficult to compromise, discuss, and listen when we feel so strongly about things. But we also know that listening and discussing and having a dialogue and compromising is crucial to the continued advancement and sustenance uh, of our republic. And that's what we're here to do tonight, is to have that dialogue, to listen to each other, and to try and engage meaningfully and respectfully and civilly in our, in our republic. Um, there's an, I, had some, I have some notes here because there are a few things I want to just make sure I hit it right off the bat. Uh, the other is that progress, we also know this, is not a straight line, right? It's not a linear thing. There's a lot of twists and turns and sometimes we go backwards and sometimes we do an actual circle. Uh, that happens. And we are going to disagree with a lot of things, and that's okay. Uh, there might be some people in this room from a variety of political persuasions. I really hope that there are. Um, we might have some people who are left who are identified as Democrats. We might have some people who are left who reject the Democratic Party. And we might have some people who are on the right, uh, who are more conservative, who identify as Republicans, and some people who are conservative who reject the Republican Party. And we're here tonight to listen to each other and to address our representative. Now, Mike Gallagher has called these kinds of events, and this event in particular, political theater. Uh, and he's called them circuses. And to me, I, I don't think that's really quite fair. I think that we've all probably seen some events that have devolved into a circus or something that you know, resembles a shouting match. And that's not what we're here to do tonight. That's not what we want to do. Uh, we're here to listen to each other, and we're here to address our representative with our questions and our concerns. Um, so I hope that we can all do that tonight, and I look forward to hearing everyone's questions. There are a few ground rules before we begin. Uh, the first is that we are here, again, to address our representative. We're not here to address each other. We're not here to attack each other or berate each other or rate me or attack me. We're here to share our questions and our concerns with our elected official, and we're also here to listen 
to the questions and concerns that other members of our community have. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is that everyone's going to get about 90 seconds to ask their question. Um, so if you have an anecdote, a personal story that you want to address, uh, please just keep that time frame in mind, 90 seconds to two minutes. And I'll give you a warning when, we, when you've got about 15 seconds left. And the third ground rule uh, is that you all have some agree and disagree signs. They look like this. If you don't have one, we've got a few extras on the stage here. Uh, and this is so that we can show our support or our, the lack of support for a particular position that someone might share. Uh, this is important for us, obviously, so that we can get a sense of the tenor of you know, the room and what people are thinking and feeling. And it's also important for our congressmen, because on a telephone town hall, you don't get that. You have no idea what the tenor of the constituency is. You don't know whether people agree with a particular position or disagree with a particular position. And that doesn't happen. And so part of this forum is to provide that transparency and that uh, opportunity for the congressman to get a sense of what people are thinking and feeling in his district. Uh, so those are the ground rules. We also have a few quotes that we've found from Representative Gallagher stating his positions on various things. We've uh, tried to make these as unbiased and nonpartisan as possible. They're just things that he said uh, on stuff like health care, the environment, Second Amendment, uh, various issues that we thought might come up tonight. And so if it's appropriate, either Sarah or Vicky are going to jump in and just you know, let us know, oh, well, actually Mike Gallagher has made a, a statement on this issue, so then we can all learn and hear what he has to say since he can't be here with us tonight. Uh, I also want to say you should have these two things. Uh, this first sheet is a sheet that details the kinds of questions that we're looking for and that we believe the congressman is looking for. Um, personal anecdotes are really great. A yes or no statement that is direct and specific is really helpful. So if you come up to the microphone and you have a question, it would be wonderful if you can phrase it in a yes or no statement. Uh, and then on the back here, if you'd like uh, Representative Gallagher to respond to you, you can use the contact information. Just fill in your contact information. We're going to deliver all of these to his office. Um, so you should receive a response from him. The other thing is we have these fun postcards. Uh, that have pre-printed Representative Gallagher's Appleton office address, and we encourage you to fill these out or take these back with you and hand them out to some friends so that everyone can have the opportunity to engage, even folks who aren't here tonight. So, I think that's about it, and without further ado, the way that this is going to work is we'll just have people line up at these microphones, so if you have a question, and I hope people do, uh, please just come on up and stand at a microphone, and we'll just go one person, the other person, one person, the other person. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Congressman Gallagher, my name is Richard Larson. I live in Green Bay. I'm one of your constituents. Uh, uh, you are one of 435 members of the U.S. House of Representatives, and the Congressional Budget Office has estimated in their scoring of the, uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act that uh, Congress has passed, uh, the House of Representatives has passed, that uh, approximately 23 million people will lose health insurance as a result of that. Now, dividing up the 435 congressional districts in the United States, that puts... Uh, that would leave a potential of uh, almost 37,000 people in uh, your district as potentially losing their health insurance. Now, the, uh, the, uh, uh, con the Republican Congress members have said that they, they don't feel that the Congressional Budget Office has been very good in keeping, uh, in, in, in uh, tracking all of this, uh, comparing the, uh, this to what they did in scoring the Affordable Care Act when it was passed back in 2010. Uh, what I might suggest is that you uh, compare that to their entire record of scoring uh, uh, bills that are passed through Congress. Now, my question to you, sir, is are you prepared, yes or no, to uh, answer uh, to the almost 37,000 me members uh, uh, of, of your district that uh, stand to lose their health insurance? 
The question is, are you prepared to answer to them yes or no? Thank you, sir. Remember, folks, if you have an agree sign, yes, great. We're also live streaming this, and there are some folks from the media here. Um, so it looks like folks agree with that statement generally. Wonderful. And some disagreements. Oh, sorry, one moment. We've got a response to the uh, American Health Care Act from Representative Gallagher. Mine comes from back in March after the first AHCA didn't go to vote. The so not working, I don't think. No? No. Okay. Is it working? Oh, yeah, now it's working. Okay, thank you. Um, could you all hear what I said or should I repeat myself? Okay. Um, so, my quote, and we're just going to. Um, do quotes from Mike Gallagher. We're not going to kind of express an opinion or anything like that. It's just quotes, so directly from him. Um, my quote is from March 2017 related to the AHCA after the vote did not go through. Gallagher stated, I had concerns with the bill, including the fact that it did not address the true underlying drivers of cost in our healthcare system, and that doing the job right is more important than getting it done fast. Okay, so here is his statement from May when the new bill just came through. Um, it's kind of kind of long. He says, as the current healthcare system in America continues to break down, it's become increasingly clear that the federal government does not know best when it comes to providing health care for 323 million people in the United States. Millions of families have lost access to their preferred doctor, have had their health plan discontinued, or have had their premiums and deductibles rise so high that they're effectively still uninsured. And while our national health care system has, was certainly broken prior to the ACA, Obamacare only exacerbated its problems. The federal government's one-size-fits-all approach is failing, and I believe the future of health care's path forward is through the state innovation. He goes on to say, the bill gives states the ability to stabilize insurance markets by providing $130 billion to protect the most vulnerable in the individual insurance market. Additionally, the bill provides $15 billion to help states get back to the model like Wisconsin had, where they can mitigate costs through high-risk pools. Another $8 billion is designated in the bill for the specific purpose of helping those with pre-existing conditions find the affordable coverage they need. Additionally, I strongly believe that Washington must abide by the laws that it passes for the rest of America, which is why I was an original co-sponsor and supporter of legislation that forces members of Congress and their staff to abide by the provisions contained in the AHCA. This legislation is far from perfect, and I look forward to continuing the process of improving the bill as it makes its way through the U.S. Senate. Senate leaders have already assured me that the credits for low-income families will be increased Okay, will be increased in the coming weeks. This is an emotionally charged issue for families in Northeast Wisconsin concerned about the future of their health care. I understand and share these concerns and believe it's vitally important that we put health care on a sustainable path for the future, which must ultimately include broader reforms like driving down drug prices, increasing transparency, and changing the incentive structure for doctors. I remain firm in my commitment to protecting our seniors protecting those with pre-existing conditions, and assisting those with lower incomes in Northeast Wisconsin to ensure that they have the quality care they need and deserve. So that's a statement from the Congressman. Is this Mike working now? Can we all? Yes. Great. We have another constituent question. I'm Mary Hansen. I'm from Green Bay. Um, entitlement means a person has earned through hard work and financial contributions, both Social Security and Medicare. My question is, will you vote yes to any bill that reduces the benefits people have earned and base their lifelong retirement planning on? 
And the other comment is public education is a basic foundation of democracy and equalizes opportunity for all. My question is, will you support any bill that privatizes, minimizes, or compromises the strength of our public school system? Thank you, Mary. Can you give a statement from him on education or anything like that? Okay. Okay. Another constituent. I, I also forgot everyone's done this so far, but if you could please state your name in either the town that you're from or your zip code so that we can confirm that everyone is indeed a constituent of Representative Gallagher. That would be very helpful. My name is Christine Morrissey. I'm a constituent, Christine, yeah. I'm a constituent from Appleton. I'm not a paid protester. My questions today are in regard to your vote on the AHCA, the health care bill, as it relates to women's health in particular. The AHCA removes the mandate to cover maternity, prenatal, and delivery care, and bans subsidies for plans that cover abortion care. Pregnancy is a very dangerous condition for many women. The USA has the highest maternal and infant mortality rates in any of the developed countries. If the GOP is the party of family values, would you support a bill that does not guarantee maternity care? Number two, thousands of abortions are medically necessary to protect the lives, health, and families of women. Do you think you are qualified to force childbirth on women who are ill, unable to carry a fetus to term, or faced with a lifetime of care for a severely disabled child who may not be eligible for health care due to a pre-existing condition? You chose to represent District 8. It's your duty to think carefully about your legislative votes. The choice you have made on the AHCA reduces women to second-class status. Regardless of whether or not the Senate can come up with a better plan, you chose to disregard the lives of your female constituents for your political party. Thank you. Carol? Carol Lenz from Appleton. Uh, Representative Gallagher, when you were running for office, you said this, my promise to you in Congress is simple. While we may not always agree, you will always know exactly where I stand, and I will always be faithful to you and your families, to your community and our values, and to our country and the Constitution that guard, guards our God-given rights. For me, our community values are based on the fundamental belief that we care about and for each other. My question is, how do your community values compare with mine? Do you think you fulfilled your promise to always let the public know where you stand prior to your vote on the health care bill? I did get a response to my email, as probably many people here did, about the health care bill. And in that, you stated, I believe strongly in access to affordable and quality health care for Americans. I would much rather have read I believe strongly in affordable and quality health care for all Americans. Notice I scratched out the word access and added the word all. I make that change based on my community values. I have three questions relating to health care. Are you aware of the multiple ways the majority party has actively undermined the ACA, pushing it towards slow motion collapse, as you stated? Are you willing to support remedies to counter these actions and therefore stabilize and improve health care for all Americans? Have you studied the Medicare for All proposal? And if it is the best way to provide affordable and quality health care for all Americans, will you support it? Thank you, Carol. Please. Carol Hoffman, I live in Fish Creek. I'm extremely concerned about the heavy financial influence of the small group of billionaires who have helped pay for the campaigns of many Republicans. This one-tenth of one percent who have virtually unlimited funds expect that people like Representative Gallagher that you will help push their agenda, which is tax cuts for the super wealthy and less government control over their businesses. 
I disagree with this agenda and feel that business people must be held accountable for environmentally safe business practices and I believe that all Americans, regardless of how wealthy they are, should pay, pay their fare of taxes. I would like to know where you stand on this issue and if you will vote no on tax reform that will cut taxes and eliminate government control over business practices, knowing that possibly you owe some payback to those who helped you in your campaign. Thank you. On taxes. Uh, this looks like it was from the Green Bay Press Gazette, and it was Mike Gallagher's top issues, according to Mike Gallagher. Um, number one, I'm just going to read the top one for now, that is cutting regulations on businesses and simplifying the tax code. Then Gallagher was also quoted as saying that there are unnecessary regulations and taxes are reducing wages, killing Wisconsin jobs, and forcing our businesses overseas. Not only do we need more family-friendly tax rates, but we also need to replace our outdated, broken tax code with one that is more modern and simple. We need to cut the lobbyist-written special interest loopholes and lower rates so working families in Wisconsin can keep more of what they earn. I will fight the career politicians and bureaucrats to cut the ever-growing regulations hurting our families, small businesses, and manufacturers. I'm Senator Dave Hansen, and I'm proud to have this in my Senate district today. And, and summer uh, it is not political theater. I keep thinking back when Senator Feingold represented us all, how we hit all 72 counties. And let me tell you, I was at some of those, and he listened to everybody, the people that agreed, and the people that disagreed with him. He did a tremendous job. He did a job. I think we all had hope that Representative Gallagher would follow that direction. Maybe he will in time. But there's just three things I'd like to see him deal with. First of all, we got to eliminate Citizens United. Way too much money in politics. <laughs> and the voter suppression that's going on when people have such a difficult time to vote. Representative Gallagher, I hope you can deal with that and make that privilege, that right in our country happen. And one of the big things I've been dealing with, and we're hearing so much about this, is the gerrymandering that's going on throughout the country. It has to stop. It's unconstitutional, and Representative Gallagher, I hope you can be with us to accept the fact and do it in a way like Iowa does it, that model where it's done by a nonpartisan, non-political group, draw lines that are fair, and make our elections fair once more, one person, one vote. So, Representative Gallagher, believe all those things, please. So, I will just say something quickly on town halls, going back to what Dave said originally. Uh, Mike Gallagher was quoted as saying, We had more than 10,000 people on the line for a Tully town hall. We heard all different perspectives. On the town hall issue, you know I spent nine hours on Saturday doing one on one meetings mostly with some people on the opposite side of the ideological spectrum. It was, for the most part, a really constructive conversation. I learned a lot. We also had 20 listening sessions, so I'm interested in having a conversation with anybody. I'm not interested in political theater, something that becomes a circus, which I fear kind of has become what people are being urged to do in certain segments of the Democratic Party right now. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Marcus Ritter. I live in Sturgeon Bay, and I've had the opportunity to go down to Crescent Beach at Algoma and see the beautiful soup. And I was wondering if uh, getting rid of the EPA or crippling the EPA is going to help you clean up Lake Michigan. The same thing goes for all the other rivers that are being polluted and feeding into Green Bay. So that's the thing I'm very concerned about is governing the EPA. I've, uh, I've lived uh, a, a number of years in this world, and I've had an opportunity to work in some areas that were really not safe. And I, I, I think that like, 
OSHA was a great asset to our, our communities, and I, I would encourage that we don't throw that away too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Cheryl Kelly. I'm from De Pere. I'm really disappointed, um, Representative Gallagher, that you're not here this evening. Um, and I'm also really sorry to hear that you are afraid, that you are afraid to stand up to your constituents. I think we need very strong people today representing us. We need strong people to stand up. And I'm surprised because I, I thought you had been a Marine at one time in your career. We need somebody to stand up and say, let's have an independent council. Let's have an investigation into what's going on with Russia. We don't, know, we don't need people who are afraid to even face their constituents. So I'm, I'm really disappointed. I just want to say a quick thing. Um, do we have a quote about that? Oh, okay. Uh, I just want to say a quick thing about the fact that Representative Gallagher is not here. And also, uh, with regard to what someone mentioned earlier regarding telephone town halls and one-on-one -on -one sessions, and it was a quote that we read from Representative Gallagher. Um, you know, he does meet with people one-on-one. -on -one, and, and I just want to say, in public, and I've said this before, that I really think that's admirable. And I applaud him for doing that. And I think that is a very important thing to do. Um, do people agree with that? I mean, are there people who think that's a good thing for you to do? I also think that it's really good that he does these telephone town halls. I'm glad that he's able to reach so many people. I think that's a wonderful thing. I also think that they're both insufficient. They do not satisfy the obligations of a representative democracy. And I think that, that a forum like this, where people have the opportunity to share with each other, where we have the opportunity to learn from each other, and hear what we're thinking about, hear what we are concerned about, and hear what issues we're facing. We, you know, I'm, I learn a lot. I'm learning a lot of these things. And I think that Representative Gallagher would as well. And I, I also think that he wants a dialogue like this. I think he wants a civil two-way dialogue. Or at least he says that he does. And he's repeatedly said that in one-on-one in -on -one meetings and things. He's demonstrated that he does want that. Um, but this right here is a model of what civil discourse can be. This is what we can do. Like, you know, this is, these are people, right? We're just normal people. And, and this is great that we can have a discussion about these challenging, passionate issues. And so I just want to address that point about him not being here and about the, the things that he's uh, done in lieu of moments like this, of opportunities like this. And I want to applaud everyone again for, for being here tonight. I just think it's really admirable. Um, okay, I think we've got a couple more people coming up here. Oh, you did find a quote. Oh, okay, we also have a quote from Representative Gallagher. Oh, you need the mic. Oh, you can hold this one. Okay, I just found this one real quick on the Russia thing, because I was curious what he had, did have to say. Um, this is in the Journal Sentinel, it was just a few days ago. Um, his response was, I just want to know what happened. I'm not making a judgment one way or another, um, said for Mike Gallagher, a former Marine Intelligence Officer who sits on the House Armed Services Committee. He called on the White House to provide complete transparency. Um, he quotes again, the White House would do well to be as cooperative con with Congress as humanly possible because every day that we spend going down the rabbit hole of what did or didn't happen in these meetings is a day that we're not spending working on the many serious issues. And then he said, we also need uh, more clarity from the Trump administration on our broader, broader Russia policy. Yes, sir. Uh, Representative Gallagher, hello again. Uh, <laughs> probably getting sick of me. My name is Dan Dillon from Marion, Wisconsin. Um, to refresh your memory, Representative Gallagher, I'm the guy that went up the back of a tractor and wound up with a steel plate in my neck. Um, I've talked before, written letters to you uh, regarding my fears about losing my health care, which is a very real possibility. Um, but I want to talk about 
part two uh, and, and why um, there are additional concerns that I have. Uh, my wife and I moved back to Wisconsin in 2012 and I started an independent agency, a, uh, an agency that works with people with disabilities, uh, persons that are on Medicaid, uh, medical assistance. I help them secure funding so they can stay in their nursing homes and so they can live independently. Um, I left the corporate world to do that and I would not, uh, I don't regret a minute of that decision. But I do want to talk about what the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, has offered to me. Uh, the Affordable Care Act made it possible for me to start my agency. I, I have my own business now because I can afford insurance. Before this, before the Affordable Care Act, uh, my wife and I both were on a high-risk pool insurance plan, and I couldn't, I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford to start my own agency and help the people that were in need. Um, if the Affordable Care Act goes away, um, Trump Care becomes the law of the land, there's a very real possibility that I will have to close my agency. The people that I have under guardianship will have to find another guardian. I will have to go back to the corporate world. I'll probably have to get insurance through that organization. But what breaks my heart is that the people that I have grown to love since opening my agency, they're not going to have anybody. I care about these people deeply. And um, I want you, Representative Gallagher, to think about that. I'm not the only independent business operator that's in business now because they can afford, they can afford it. They can afford health care. They can run businesses. I want you to be aware of what will happen to people like myself, people like my wife, if that goes away. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, my name is Mark Fleur. I live in rural Shawano County right now. Uh, I can't give you an address because technically I'm homeless, although I have plenty of friends. I'm not in the street or anything like that. Uh, one thing that hasn't been addressed, it's hardly ever addressed in the national news. I haven't heard Mr. Gallagher say anything about it. And it's more of a long-term thing, but it's what's going on in Japan, in case anybody hasn't figured it out yet. Uh, our planet is dying, and it's going to continue. Uh, the Pacific Ocean is having serious problems, and uh, I don't know how many years that can go on. They have no technology to fix what's going on over there in Japan. It's just, we have had a full-blown meltdown. China syndrome only triplicate, and nobody's talking about it. Now all these issues you're talking about here are very serious issues and I understand that and I'm concerned about them too. But uh, really they're all going to be a moot point if something doesn't get fixed over there. And uh, I wonder if our esteemed representative, Mr. Gallagher, has even looked at that at all. That's my question. Thank you. Don't forget the agree, disagree signs. Those are important. Got to get a sense of everyone's thoughts on it. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm Tom Johnston from Niagara, up on the border. <clears throat> First of all, to Congressman Gallagher, on this day after Memorial Day, thank you for your service. As you can see, we're a pretty mild, gentle, group of people here, we really would like to hear from you, and I think you really would like to hear from us. So let's get together and talk. Thank you. My name is Cindy Carter from Appleton, Senator, or Congressman Gallagher, I'm sorry. Our national monuments are vital to our tourism economy, they're vital to our of citizens for pre-public spaces, and they will be vital to our future generations. Will you support leaving our national monuments as they are? Hi, 
Representative Gallagher and Barbara Simon from uh, Leopolis. Um, my husband and I are both small business owners, very small businesses. We also both have to have pre-existing medical conditions. Um, under this proposed uh, plan, we would, e we would either lose our health care coverage or be put in a high-risk pool, which would really just be delaying uh, losing our coverage because we would not be able to afford it, which would mean we would lose our house and our businesses, etc. cetera. Um, we have benefited from the ACA. And my question for you, Representative, is if the proposed AHCA is so wonderful, will you and all the other Congress people agree to personally participate in it yourself? Yes. I actually can't find the quote related to that, but I will say that Gallagher said that he co-sponsored um, a bill to say that they would also have to use the AHCA. My name is Georgia Stapleton and I live in Shawano. I want Representative Gallagher to know I speak as a registered nurse who has had many years of health care experience. The last case managing 117 ICU beds at St. Luke's Medical Center in Milwaukee, the largest hospital in Wisconsin. I know you are one who comes from medical doctors in your background, so you might find this interesting. My question is, will you read the New England Journal of Healthcare article written by Drs. Himmelstein and Wohandler, two university med school lecturers? They predict 43,000 people will perish in one year if they lose their ACA. Will you vote accordingly then to keep the ACA to protect Americans who need the Affordable Care Act to even stay alive. Hi, my name is Ronald Pitchkin from Casco, Wisconsin, where we have more cows than people. <laughs> Congressman Gallagher, I've been uh, tempted to be part of your town hall call-in thing, and I don't agree that it's the answer to anything that's effective. They, they answered me and, and wanted to know what my question was going to be before I asked it. They screened my call and then somehow I didn't get to speak to the congressman. <laughs> I, I just don't understand how that could happen, but it did. Further, I do agree with the other people that have talked about the service that Congressman has provided in his military as a Marine. That's an honorable thing. You put your life on the line for our country. You put your life on the line for all of Americans. But now you're a member of a party that does not stand for all of Americans. It stands for the rich. The, the policies of the, the ACA that was just passed by the, the Republican House is not for all of America. The policies that came through on the one-page tax form is not for all of America. The policy that's, that's presented in your budget proposal, where you count a trillion dollars twice, is not for all of America. What I would like to know from you, Congressman, is will you stand up in a bipartisan way and vote against the things that are wrong with the Republican Party. Yeah. Okay, so I have a quote from Gallagher on budget and spending. He states, federal spending is out of control, leaving us with a national debt of over $19 trillion, bankrupting the country and sending the bill to the next generation. 
To revive our economic strength, I will work tirelessly to cut wasteful spending, streamline government, and get our economy growing again so we can balance the budget and pay down the national debt. I strongly support a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution and will support one in Congress. My name is, uh, go ahead. <laughs> My name is Terry Lee and uh, I was actually able to meet with you just a couple weeks ago and have a nice little roundtable discussion, uh, mostly on health care. Um, many of us at the table were disappointed by your vote and many of us disagreed that you kind of pushed us off to the Senate. And it was disappointing that you didn't fight for us. Um, I wrote a letter, me and my girlfriend, about mental health. Uh, and if we get rid of the current regulations that tell insurance companies that they have to cover mental health, the same way they cover surgical procedures or anything like that. That was fought tooth and nail to get into the ACA because mental health has always been something that's been stigmatized and has never been covered by health insurance until the ACA was enacted. And I want you to fight for us, for our interests, and for our values. And you keep on saying that that AHCA was not a perfect bill. Make it a perfect bill. Fight to make it a perfect bill. Don't slough it off. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Hi, Congressman. <clears throat> I'm Barb Meyer Davitella uh, from the Green Bay area, and I work in the field of mental health. I'm a counselor here in Green Bay for a clinic that sees quite a few people who are on Medicaid. And um, my concern is, will you be independent enough to stand up and vote against this budget that Trump has proposed that would uh, cut the heart out of Medicaid um, something like $800 million they're, they're billion. proposing. It's billion. Billion, I'm sorry, yes. With a B. With a B, and um, that's gonna devastate our state, especially when we have a governor that seems to be not willing to protect us either. And so we're relying on you to have the courage of your convictions and actually live up to your words because these are vulnerable people that we have, many of them are already very traumatized by just listening to the news and the threats that are being made to cut off their care. Um, block grants are going to end up, we know, limiting the number of, instead of the Congress um, having the decision making, it'll fall to our state legislators who will have to make those tough decisions and they're going to have to cut somewhere. And that means elderly people, children, um, homeless families, many who, who suffer very serious effects of, of mental illness, not of their own choosing. We have drug and alcohol programs that will be cut and will affect many people in this, in this state. Our quality of life will be much, uh, much less. So um, please have the courage to vote against the ACHA and also this budget. Thank you. My name, is, my name is Cindy Schumer, and I'm from Chicago, Wisconsin. Congressman Gallagher, my daughter was born with severe congenital birth defects. She entered 19 major facial reconstruction surgeries. Congressman Gallagher, yes or no? Do you feel my daughter should be punished for the rest of her life because she was born unlucky? Uh, my name is John. I live in De Pere. Uh, if you were here, I would ask you if you had the... Uh, if you recognize that 50 cents of every tax dollar goes to our military budget, 50 cents of every dollar. And uh, I would invite you to your 
colleagues to take a real close look at how much of that is actually needed. And uh, it's one way that we can cut our, you know, our deficit and provide services for the things that people here are talking about. So I have a quick quote on national security and the military from Gallagher. He says, when America leads, the world is safer and more prosperous. Sadly, over the last seven years, we've abandoned American leadership, abandoned our allies, and undermined our credible military deterrent. As a result, we are no longer safe here at home. <laughs> Hello, Congressman Gallagher. I wish you were here. My name is Mike Layden. I live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And that like certainly you have a little question. Well, for, yeah. Yeah. Congressman Gallagher, we all, we all know that money is the mother's milk of politics. However, the baby is our democracy, and it is drowning in all the money. I cannot see how you can sleep at night without weaning yourself off the, the uh, present system of, of uh, pay to play. Uh, you know, Woody Allen said that 80% of, uh, of success is showing up. Mikey, try it. You'll like it. Do you have a question for the congressman, sir? Yeah, I do have a okay, question great. for the congressman. And it's very simple. Uh, it's not on the list on the back, but I, I, I agree with all those questions. Also, can you personally recite the first 16 words of the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, without which the vital separation of church and state cannot be maintained, and I don't believe that our democracy can be maintained without it. Do you agree? Thank you. Okay, well, I have a question for the congressman uh, that I think I'll ask, which is, uh, Representative Gallagher, you've mentioned in the past uh, that high-risk pools seem to work well in our state, and I learned a few months ago that, that high-risk pools um, occasionally will make you wait before you can actually be accepted into the pool. Um, and so therefore, you know, you, you might have a condition, you have a pre-existing condition, and then you try and buy insurance through this high-risk pool, and if you're fortunate enough to have the, the means to afford that insurance, you then have to wait before the condition that puts you into the high-risk pool can actually cover, like, until the insurance can cover that condition, which seems uh, unethical and unfair to me. And so my question is, the high-risk pools that you've spoken about and that Senator Johnson has spoken about and that the uh, American Health Care Act uh, has discussed, will you take steps to ensure that they are different from the way that they worked in the past? And if so, uh, what would those steps be to eliminate that provision and cover people who have conditions that place them in high-risk pools? Oh, okay, yeah, please. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Maddie. I'm from Green Bay. And my question is that, Representative Gallagher, you are identifying yourself with and supporting a party that works tirelessly to end a women's access to essential reproductive rights, such as abortion, because you're pro-life. But then you vote to take away health care that is life or death for many of your constituents. <laughs> Thank you. Cindy Carter from Appleton again. This time I'm asking a question on behalf of the CCL, which I'm a member of. This morning in western Wisconsin, a man died when his car was washed away by floodwaters from a bridge embutment that let loose. Floods, severe storms, tornadoes, hurricanes. We are in a climate crisis. Will you support and bring forward bipartisan legislation to address our climate crisis before it's too late? Thank you, Cindy. You know the environment on climate. I cannot find any comments on the environment. 
Oh, the Thai company does support um, Great the, Lakes Initiative. Yes. Sorry? The Great Lakes Initiative. Yes. Yes. And he thought Congressman Riddle did well with phosphates. And that as well. Thank you, Nick. My name is Jan Cook. I'm, I'm from Shano. I'm a retired educator who worked for 34 years in the class classroom where I had children of all backgrounds. I have seen children who are getting help with their disabilities. Are you also concerned <coughs> that children continue to have services for their disabilities? The Trump Care Bill slashes these funds, and Trump's budget takes money away from public schools who are the only schools which are required to provide these services. Here, but I'm from Ellington in Outagamie County, and this is not my first public meeting today. I also attended a meeting at the Machine Shed in Appleton, where Republicans met. They also were disappointed that you didn't show up. <laughs> um, At both public meetings, I heard that people want to know where you stand on issues before you vote. Both groups are sick of being ripped off by insurance companies and big pharma, and both groups want to get rid of, they call it the swamp, I call it corruption. And my question to you is, will you stand up as a true Marine as a mother of two Iraq war vets, I ask you to do that and save the people of your district. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Judy Brunt from Sister Bay, Wisconsin, Door County, and Representative Gallagher. I believe that a representative needs to be judged by what they do, not just by what they say. And I received a letter from you in March where you stated you would not be in lockstep with the president, with the current president and his administration. So my question, unfortunately, is not a yes or no answer, but I would really like to know why you voted eight times to not have Trump release his taxes. Thank you. I just had to share a quote that I found on Representative Gallagher's website when he was running for office. He stated, I will not hesitate to stand up to any president or political leader, regardless of party, party in order to do what's right. My question is, do you stand behind those words with action? Thank you, Carol. Actually, I have two questions if nobody's coming up just yet. <laughs> um, so my dad was a Vietnam vet. Um, thanks. I unfortunately lost my dad to um, Agent Orange exposure just a couple years ago. And he received his care at the VA hospital in Arizona. And I, I went a couple times to visit him. And it was packed wall-to-wall -wall people. A lot of the changes that they're proposing in the AHCA, as well as in the new budget proposal, will have a massive impact on veterans. There are three million veterans who don't receive their care currently through the VA. They have outside insurance, but they will potentially be forced to go into the VA, which is already way too slammed. At the same time that Trump is proposing a hiring freeze and slashing other benefits that our VAs, you know, our veterans need. So my question to uh, Congressman Gallagher is, will you protect our veterans? Thank you. 
My name is Lindsay Dorf and I live in Green Bay. I want Representative Gallagher to know that I know several people who are hurting and scared due to the passage of the AHCA, which he voted for. <coughs> Mothers and fathers of children with special needs or mental illness, cancer survivors who are self-employed and no longer know if they'll be able to afford insurance. We need our representative to reach across the aisle and work to improve the ACA. I understand that a lot of people ran on repealing the ACA, but I don't remember people running on taking access to health care away from 23 million people. That's not a campaign promise that I've heard from anybody on either side of the aisle. So, I really hope that given the difficulty of the situation, people can show some flexibility and make the choices that are going to be best for their constituents and provide people with the services that they need. So I wanted to ask him, well I wanted to say that these concerns are real and valid for the people of Northeast Wisconsin. What do they need to say or how do they need to say it so that you'll be willing to listen with an open mind and not dismiss their lives as political theater? And when you run for re-election, will you be running on not holding public forums with your own constituents? <laughs> Do we have any more questions for the congressman? Oh, yeah, we've got a couple. Super. My name is George Lucia, and I'm from De Pere, Wisconsin. And I actually don't have any questions for the congressman who's not here. I just have an announcement that I'm running for the United States Senate in 2018. So if anybody wishes to have a meeting such as this and have me a part and ask, answer your questions, feel free. I'm here for now, so if you want to ask later. Thank you, sir. And there's going to be some time out uh, in the hall for us to talk to folks. That's Congressman Gallagher, Richard Larson from Green Bay again. When I called your office, uh, I called all three offices in Green Bay, Appleton, and Washington, D.C., to try and find out when you'd be in the district when a uh, uh, town hall such as this could be scheduled. And I was told that you're at your, uh, uh, by, by uh, your uh, scheduling secretary that uh, your schedule is not published in advance for security reasons. My question to you, sir, is are these the people that you're afraid of <laughs> that, uh, that, that you don't publish your, your schedule uh, for security purposes? Are we the ones that you're afraid of? Because if you are, uh, you're not Marine that I thought you were. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lynn DeHaan. I'm from Sister Bay, Wisconsin. Grew up in Manitowoc. And um, I spent a few months out of the area in another state. And I've been asked repeatedly this last few months while I was there, what happened to Wisconsin? Where is it gone? And I, I had difficulty explaining that. They said, are the people there all wealthy or do they not care about poor people? Well, what happened? And I said, well, there are many good people there who think like we do and would like to help all people and support the health care, are con very concerned about the environment and um, concerned about the immigrant rights and against the travel ban and this type of thing, but they're not hearing this because they're hearing about the top level representatives that we have who are in Washington who are giving us a very bad reputation. So I asked you, Gall Representative Gallagher, I told I would ask and find out what happened, and then I had hope because you are a new representative that perhaps you would be listening to your people who live in your constituency. So that's what I would like to know. What are you willing to do to represent the average people here in Wisconsin who do care about everyone? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jane Benson. I'm from Suamico, Wisconsin. Representative Gallagher, I was one of the lucky five who got to meet with you a couple weeks ago at a round table at the attic here in Green Bay. And I sincerely appreciated the opportunity to speak with you personally. We had in our small group a Republican who has uh, type 1 diabetes and struggles to pay for her consumables and would be one of those affected by pre-existing conditions. 
My husband and I are Democrats, uh, and we're each self-employed and uh, would be seriously affected. We're in the 50 to 65 year age group, and I want to state this for people who may not be aware, that we are part of the group who where the maximum you could charge people was three to one for insurance coverage. So uh, insurance companies could charge three times more uh, for people in our age bracket. Now it w they could charge five times more, okay? So that's one big change in the AHCA. And then another one that seriously affects us, or one of the other ones that seriously affects us, is the change in subsidies versus tax credits. They would go down by almost 50%. So for us personally, this made a change from $205 per month to over $1,700 per month for our catastrophic health insurance. And we know we could no longer afford insurance, and that doesn't include the pre-existing conditions we have at 61 and 58. So. <laughs> My concern is uh, you brought out at our meeting that you belong to Promise Keepers, which is a bipartisan group. You're a vice chair for that group. I know you met with Senator K with Representative Kagan. He was the, the representative from the 8th District. And that you like his idea of pricing transparency. That's awesome. We're all on board with that. We want to know, will you continue to be bipartisan? Will you work with Democrats who have the same basic interests that so many people in here are describing so that we can change the ACA instead of going down the route of the AHCA, which clearly isn't really set up to work? Thank you. Thank you, Jane. So I have a quick quote um, from Gallagher, basically on him being uh, a representative. So he states, at the source of all of our problems, foreign and domestic, is a symptom of the same disease, politicians who care more about their own careers and solutions. Gallagher said he would treat his own time in public office as another deployment, meaning it's a temporary position with a clear objective. I don't care about the consequences politically, I just want to be honest with the people of the 8th District. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Dan Dillon again from Marion. And believe it or not, I do have actually more things on my mind than healthcare. Um, Representative Gallagher, I communicate with you pretty frequently via email and uh, actually Facebook. Uh, there's something that I sent to you that I have not received a response, so I wanted to address that with you tonight. Uh, it has to do with uh, military intelligence, and I know that you are you come from a background in military intelligence, so I thought this would be appropriate and important to you. But what I had said to you was, uh, Representative Gallagher, where is your statement regarding President Trump divulging classified intelligence to a Russian ambassador who's deeply connected to the FBI counterintelligence investigation? Aside from the actual information that was leaked, what does it say about a president Whose judge, uh, president's judgment that he gave this intelligence to Lavrov and Kislyak at the request of, of Putin. Lastly, as you know, in February, reports from inside intelligence agencies warned about sharing intelligence with President Trump out of a real concern that he would not properly contain that intelligence. Now that the concerns have been legitimized due to Trump's actions, do you believe it's appropriate or advisable to risk the security of this nation or to damage the relationship with our allies around the world by allowing President Trump to have access to any intelligence. I <laughs> look forward to hearing or seeing your response, sir. Thank you, Dan. So, I do have one of his top issues. Um, according to Mike Gallagher, it's just ironic given who, who the intel was from that he revealed. Um, improving national security by building up the nation's military, attacking radical Islamic terrorists, and supporting the country's allies, especially Israel. My name is Vicki Smith, and I'm from Green Bay. I've listened to people here talk about the cost of everything. I want to know why you didn't cost it out. How could you vote 
for an affordable cult cult care. You didn't even know what it was going to cost. You didn't know how many people were going to lose it yet. You followed the Republican march and voted yes. from uh, Sturgeon Bay, and I'm going to talk a little bit about something that doesn't involve us up here too much, but uh, Mike Gallagher, I want you to understand there's a big difference between charter schools and voucher schools. My son, my son was, uh, was 50 years old at the time, got a job at a, char uh, a voucher school, and one thing he found out is that the entire population was black. And he was a science teacher for 7th graders and 8th graders, and he got a science room. Not one fountain for water, not one Bunsen burner, not even any gas. It just no, no benches for doing chemical work or anything like that. These voucher schools are being, are, are being run by people who are taking advantage of this so-called free money. And uh, I think it's very disgusting. If you want to see another example of this, I welcome you to read Aaron Richardson's uh, column in uh, the Mocky Journal. He's uh, outlined several experiences like this where the voucher school has really dramatically under-equipped those students. And who cares? Because there are no requirements on voucher schools. Only public schools have them, and, and charter schools. That's true. And the one thing that's really sad about this is that in that other school, too, where Aaron Richards uh, wrote about, again, it's an all-black school. I wonder, is this government subsidized segregation? Thank you, sir. Looks like, yes, ma'am, please. Hello, I'm Julie Gordon from Alloway. Back down for you. No problem. Thank you. And I wanted to address the issue of Senate Bill 295 that got snuck through. I called um, Representative Steffens the day it was being voted on and asked him about it. And he he got off the phone. And he had to ask somebody else. He didn't even know what it was about. Um, what it is, is we turned over all of our database in Wisconsin to the Pew Trust, and we're paying $25,000, and they're the ones that come up with um, lies about um, voter fraud. Um, they took away the right, I'm, I was a special registration deputy working with the League of Women Voters, <coughs> and Wisconsin is the only state that can no longer have people register voters volunteers. Um, and when you contact the Wisconsin Election Commission, um, their website doesn't work and it's not connected to the DMV. One of our members moved to um, one of those apartments downtown on Washington. She got her driver's license updated. She went to register to vote and they wouldn't let her because they didn't have that address in their database. So this is very frightening for me. Um, we registered 1,355 students, and now we can't do it anymore. So I want to ask, uh, ask Representative Gallagher, will you undo Senate Bill 295 and let volunteers help register voters? Wisconsin is the only state that was stopped. So that's frightening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Yeah, please, sir. Congressman Gallagher, my name is Dick Smythe. I live in Cisco Bay. The single most pressing issue facing all nations, all people, is global climate change. My question is, do you support the United States playing an appropriate role in the Paris Climate Accord, representing a nation that has by far the largest per capita emission of CO2 of any nation in the world. Thank you, sir. 
Folks, I just want to say again as we come to a close tonight that um, thank you. Thank you again so much for being here. Thank you for your thoughtful, articulate <coughs> questions. And, uh, and thank you for participating. Um, democracy is not a spectator sport. And again, it's events like these that make that abundantly clear uh, that it's not. And that democracy goes on, even uh, if our representatives aren't, aren't here in person. Um, so thank you again for being here. Thank you for being willing to engage. Uh, we've got any, any thank or someone. You, thank you to you all. Yeah. If you're somebody who, who might have some differing views from the ones that were expressed here, uh, I want to say thank you for coming and thank you for staying. Uh, you know, it's so important that we dialogue with each other. We're not going to agree on everything, and that's okay. But uh, talking, discussing, compromising, and listening is, uh, is crucial to the you know, continued success and advancement of our republic. And, uh, and it matters that, that we're here and that we're trying to do that. So we're going to have a few minutes now. Um, if you want to chat and stuff, we've got the outside little area. You can hang out and chat. Oh, please drop off your comment sheets up here on the stage.